Well, it's a beautiful day here in Halifax. It's the end of March, about uh, the 28th, 29th of March. Sunny, right now hovering right around the freezing point, zero degrees Celsius. And that's what the temperatures have been for the last few days. They drop down below zero or below freezing at night and go just above freezing during the day. Uh, that makes for maple syrup season, which is in full swing here in Nova Scotia, which is great, of course. Always love maple season or maple syrup season. Uh, you know, the other thing that happens this time of year, of course, is the days are getting longer. And what's so great about that is that I can plan a day hike that allowed me to go further into the woods, stay longer, and not have to worry about hiking back in the dark. I mean, that's not a bad thing. It's just, I prefer to be back before dark. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to push a little further into areas that I haven't been since uh, probably last fall, maybe a little longer than that. See if I can't find a few spots for camping and setting up a new hammock system that I'll be showing you at some point. I finally uh, invested in a good hammock system, but uh, I won't reveal that just yet because uh, I haven't even had a chance to test it out yet. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm, I invite you to follow along. I don't promise you anything exciting, but I will show you what I see. It's probably a little early for anything growing out of the ground yet. However, you never know. There's places where the sun is shining. It's beautifully warm. Uh, you can probably see on the trail behind me, there's still some snow and some ice. So I still have to wear my Catula micro spikes to uh, make sure of my footing. I could probably get by without them, but uh, better sense of confidence to have them on right now. So I invite you to come along, see what we can find. So just a few weeks ago, I would have been happy to travel up the end of the lake because it's way up there in that far corner beyond where we can actually see that I'm headed today. But a few weeks ago, I would have been happy, happy to travel on the ice knowing that it was 8 to 10 inches thick. But now, with the warming and the cooling and the strengthening of the sun, there's open areas, especially around the shores where it gets a little bit more shallow. But even in the center, I can see some open areas. So, nope. <laughs> Not traveling on the lake anymore. Not this season. Even right down here you can see some open areas. Still a beautiful view though. I decided to take a little spur trail, just something off of the main trail, something I hadn't seen before. It started it started out looking like a, a deer trail or a game trail, but then it's uh, much more heavily used. I think it's just a little bypass trail that been developed years ago. I don't know why I never noticed it before, but it did turn out a small reward. Not so much for today, but for maybe next fall. All kinds of birch polypores on this dead, two dead birch trees, small birch trees right here, all the way up. Now the ones that I see here, uh, they're spent looking. They're probably still good. They're not totally black. They're just browned underneath. I'm not going to work to get those down. But what's nice is, if I come back here next September, there'll be new ones coming out on the tree. That's a good find, even if it's not for today. Okay. So I've more or less reached the area that I wanted to get to today. Uh, you know, two and a half, two and a half, maybe three hour hike. A little further than I normally go. Uh, maybe a little bit less traveled by anybody else. Not that there's many people that come back in this area anyway. But, uh, wow, I gotta tell you, 
I've been looking now for a few minutes for a place to sit down and have a cup of tea and a snack. The wind has come up dramatically. High winds coming out of the west right now and uh, I'm looking for a place that's sheltered. I didn't bring a tarp because I wasn't expecting this kind of wind. So I'm looking for a place I can sit down and build a little fire in a stick stove, have a cup of tea and then I can explore a little bit, a little bit of energy in my, in my belly. All right, I'll set up the camera, we'll put a fire on, have a cup of tea, and then we'll I'll show you a few things that I brought along. All right, folks, hopefully you can hear me over the wind noise. So I've uh, put a small microphone on that has a, a windsock on it to kind of dampen the wind noise, but I'm in as sheltered place as I can find here, and it, I think this will work out well. So I've collected some birch bark. Not going to need a lot for this. Dead spruce or pine, more than I need of that. And I'm going to clear a little spot right here of the duff, mostly pine needles, try to get down. Damp underneath. Do you know in Nova Scotia, our controlled fire season, the one where we have our fire ban, happens from March 15th to October 15th each year. Now, the regulations are is that you can't have a fire of any kind, wouldn't matter what it was in, any kind of fire between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. And then each day at 2 p.m. they'll release whether or not it's safe to have a fire from then until uh, 8 p.m. and then from 8 p.m. round the clock again. Uh, it's been, and they have a color-coded map, so if it's green after 2 o'clock you're welcome to have a fire, as long as of course you do it, still have to do it safely. And it has been green, which only makes sense. There's still snow. The ground is, yeah, it's actually frozen down here. So I feel quite comfortable having fire here. It's not going to spread into the duff today. What do I have? First time use. My Tom Shoe Titanium Wood Stove. The one that is based on the Emberlit stove. With a few subtle differences, holes in the bottom. Trying to stay in frame for this. I have used it with alcohol. I shouldn't say first time use. I have used it with alcohol. I just haven't used it with wood yet. And of course it goes together exactly the same way as the emberlet does. Get my five sides on. Oh, that's not quite on. There we go. Floor plate in. Yeah. Up like that. Close it together. And that'll work just fine. Now I did make a small piece of uh, aluminum flashing that I can put under the stove for days when it is a little bit more tricky. I'm going to, I'm going to put it under the stove, not because I'm afraid the coals will fall through and, and start scorching or you know getting into the duff and, and potentially causing a fire, not because of that, but more as a block for moisture. So I just want to, going to put it under there as a block for the moisture that's likely to draw up. So today it's going to be a traditional bottom up berm. So I'll put a little bit of birch bark inside. I'm actually not going to need all this birch bread because I have something else I want to show you, but 
start with that. And my sticks. Get a few of my sticks ready. Put the little ones in to start. I can light it or add more. Or I will be adding more, of course, once my fire gets going. The Tom Shoe, the Luxada, and my Uberleben. Well, not so much my Uberleben, but they have big feed ports here. And it looks nice, but at the same time, my sticks are starting to follow through the holes. That's enough to get this uh, fire lit. So what I brought along, I think I am going to have to use these for the, the pot I have as well. These crossbars, keep those handy. What I brought along is another new product that I have been testing. So in the past, you've seen me test the fire strip roll by the production hangar 51, the fire specialists. The waxwood, which is a proprietary formulated paraffin wax infused wood. <laughs> Works identical to fat wood, in my opinion. That's a great product. Another product I've been testing for the last number of trips out is fire rope, and I've got some left in this, so I'm not going to use that today, but something else that I've been playing with, I haven't used much of it, that they sent me for testing. Really kind of cool. It's called a fire plug. And I don't believe, I did some checking before I came out today, I don't believe these are on the market yet, at least in North America. I, I did find them for sale in the UK, but uh, what a cool little product. They comes in bags of 50. Um, this is not a review. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing with it today because... Uh, I am going to uh, be doing a review on it sometime. So basically, it's an inch and a half long cotton soaked with their special, special paraffin waxes and to a little plug. Um, they're totally waterproof, non-toxic. They don't degrade over time. And uh, this is how easy they are to use. There's a couple of different ways you could use them, but one of the easiest ways is just kind of work them until you can get enough fibers exposed. The more you work it, the more fibers exposed, the faster it's going to light, the faster it's going to burn. But if I just do this, just open it up, it's a little bit like working with, with a uh, Vaseline-soaked cotton ball. But the more fibers you get exposed, obviously the more easier it is going to be to light. But I left the plugs solid on the end because that'll extend their burn time. So just to get it lit, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not afraid to set it on the ground to use because it is waterproof. But I just want to make sure I'm staying in view here. Am I in view? Yep. Another product I've been testing out for now for a number of trips out is the 6-inch, six 6-sided six ferrocerium rod by Uberleben called the Hexa. With the theory being that flat sides give more surface area for the sparks when the strikers run down at the outside of it. And I mentioned, I think, there, in another recent video that it seems to be working pretty good. Again, just kind of playing with it, far, far from uh, reviewing it. Uh, lights up nice and easy. Push it in. Put my ferrocerium right away. It's going to take a few minutes for my fire to build up to the point where I'm going to put some water on for a cup of tea. And uh, when it's tea time, I'll bring it back. I'll tell you, with the dry wood and the high winds and the way this uh, stove drafts so well, it didn't take long for that initial set of firewood to burn through. But man, you can get a lot of wood in through that opening. Using it... Uh, the amber lip fashion, the side feed. All right, let's get some water on here. Still using my Camel Will 1.2 liter billy can, kettle, however you want to call it. Been using it all winter long. I'm ready to do a long-term use video on this, give you a bit of a report. But for today, just a cup of tea. Just enough, 
300 mils or so, just enough for a cup of tea. So I can refuel myself and then uh, do a little bit more exploring around this area. Didn't think I would need it, but it looks like a, maybe I could have used a windscreen. I am sheltered somewhat here in the rocks. But that's going to work out okay. When the wind dies down, you can see it's still feeding well. That's yeah, a nice little stove. Just keep pushing the sticks in. That's what it's all about with these. All right, water comes to a boil. I will bring you back, show you what else I've got. Okay, I don't mind telling you. It's colder than I anticipated it was going to be. I mean, it's a beautiful sunny day. Clouds are open, but the temperature didn't come above zero like it was supposed to. So I do have an extra layer in here I may have to put on because with that wind, and it is starting to become quite brutal, it turned out to be a much colder day than I expected. So had my snack, had my cup of tea, packed everything back up. It's still early afternoon. I've still got quite a few hours that I can play out here in the woods, so I'm going to push a little further along just to see what uh, where I can find. So already I'm in an area that I had been to once or twice, or at least moved through, not so much spent any time in, but uh, this is the most time I've actually spent just playing around in here, and uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm going to be back out here in a few weeks when it gets a little bit warmer, I think. I'll bring my new hammock out, set it up, and spend the night here. One, two nights, who knows? It, uh, it's not that far from home that I that I couldn't come out for a couple of nights. Um, it's nice out here, but i got to get moving to get warmed up, so turn the camera back on if and when I find anything interesting. Certainly at least once more before the end of the hike, but uh, yeah, I gotta get going folks. It's cool, so I'm gonna get warmed up by moving along. A couple of years ago, I portaged into this little marsh here and that stream and I followed it. You can't see the end of it here. It does curl up and goes around the corner there, but I followed it up until it came to a dead end and it was just uh, quite a swampy area, a lot of dead trees and the like. When I get out of my kayak to explore, I discovered fresh moose tracks. I mean, very fresh, like that day, the night before maybe. So every time I stop here, and it's not all that often I look, I just hope I get lucky enough to see a moose. Uh, not today. But we'll keep looking. Whether you like beavers or not, you have to appreciate what they're capable of doing. This is not new beaver activity here by any means, or there, or there, or there, or there. These are big maples. Now, they've been felled a few years, obviously, but these are big maples that were felled by beaver. And I am at least 500 meters away from any water, up a hill right now. And I know that because I went a little further up the trail and got to a high spot to see where the water was. And I thought to myself, he wanted the east trees badly, because I don't even know how he would have pulled the branches down through the woods there. You can see it's like barbed wire. Yeah, they're industrious creatures, to say the least. Okay, pop quiz. What animal creature did this? That's pretty good up there. So obviously not a porcupine, obviously not a beaver. Uh, look at the chips. They're good sized chips. I'm not quite sure. Not a squirrel. I would say some type of a woodpecker trying to get in to get at the bugs. I might also say bear but I don't see the deep claw marks that I would expect to see with bear in there. So in truth, I don't really know. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the show notes below. Two weeks ago, I was out at the far end of Susie's Lake and just sitting quietly having a cup of coffee and I could hear coyotes way up at the far end of the lake. And that's where I'm at right now, is that far end of the lake where I could hear the coyotes. I was hoping to see some evidence not new, but it certainly looks like coyote scat to me. A lot of fur in there. Got the wispy tails off the end that's usually looks like coyote. 
could be something else, but I'll accept that it's coyote because I did hear the coyote sounds back here. Okay, you can probably tell by the light, it's late afternoon. Despite the fact that it was much colder than I anticipated it being when I come out today, uh, beautiful day. Also despite the fact that the trails, as you can see behind me, are still just covered in heavy ice. Still a beautiful day. The uh, micro spikes took care of that. Eh, it's still tricky and I still have to be careful, but the micro spikes, I don't think I would have been able to make these trails without them. Success? Yes, absolutely. I got much further into the back areas of the wilderness here than I had anticipated doing today. I didn't get quite as far as I might have. There was a river crossing that, uh, and there was a couple of logs at one time that washed out, so I wasn't, didn't take the time to cut down any new logs, but I, that was fine because that was even further than I had originally anticipated going. I have a couple spots that I can set up a, a, a hammock, or go to the ground and put up a tarp. Either way, they're gonna be good spots. And uh, as soon as a little bit more of this ice is gone, the temperature stays above zero or around zero, then uh, I'm gonna be out for the night. Yeah, a good day. I had anticipated stopping and having lunch and building a second fire and having lunch, but uh, I didn't keep track of the time too well. So I stopped, grabbed another, another energy bar, ate it on the run, just kept going because uh, I still have about an hour and a half before I get out of the woods. And uh, I told my wife I'd be home by a certain time. She'll be calling if I'm not. Okay, I may turn the camera back on. If I don't, then uh, this will be it for this video. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now. One last look in the late afternoon sun. Hopefully, next time I come out, there'll be more water than ice on the lake.